Hey, everybody. What's up? It is uh, I, and Draw I, on Receipts. And I, Nick. I, Nick. <laughs> I Nick and Nick. Late night, Nick. Late night, Nick. Tonight, right? That's right. At uh, 10, 10 p.m. Eastern. Live. Mmm. Mmm. You guys like the schedule? This is a late night Nick schedule. Yes. I... We don't have a major details schedule. I didn't do any of these sketches. So don't come crying to me. It's a nice backdrop, though. You think? Yeah, it's nice. It's a... Uh, it adds some texture. I mean, last week was very much like a mental asylum. <laughs> oh, that's right. It was like a jail. Maurizio! What's up? Oh my gosh. Hey, hey, nice walls. Yeah, that's that's Nick's handiwork. Nick has got his studio or room totally outfitted, studio style. He's working on that Patreon, working day and night on that Patreon. Yeah, it's coming along. It's getting there. I didn't ask you on the pod, Nick, but uh, what are the different the different levels? What what sort of benefits are you gonna give? So I, I put an Insta story out just to get some feedback, but I think the first level is having three, it's three dollars, and then you can see all the late night nicks, but high definition. Mm. So I'm going to record them in high definition and then post them, and then you can watch them back whenever you want. It's a full light rate. It never disappears. Like tw the normal ones disappear every 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then second tier is doing my chair sketches, videos on my chair sketches, like full on, we talked about that one on the pod. Mm. And then the last one I think is gonna be, you make a suggestion for a late night Nick sketch, mm -hmm. and then I send you the sketch. Mm. And so then they have an OG, original Nick Baker sketch. Right, right. Um, hey Nick, have you tried to recreate the Monami 135 stick on Procreate? Yes. Yeah, that's the one I use for my chair sketches. Oh. I made a custom, and that's another perk. That was another perk. Oh, getting custom brushes? Yeah, for Procreate. Nice. How did you, oh gosh, well, I don't know. I don't want to give away your secrets. What? How you, how you made the custom brush. I mean, I there's a gazillion settings on Procreate. Yeah. I, can, I don't remember what they are. I just remember like... Drawing with a Monami, drawing with my Procreate pen, and adjusting. Oh. And adjusting, and adjusting, and adjusting until I just got it right. Gotcha. Uh, give us some tips on how to formulate concept of a project. Like how to, how to come about, like how to, you know, I guess formulate I your own side project type I deal. ID8? Uh, I think they're... Concept of a, pro of a project. I'm I'm wondering if they're asking like, how do you come up with a project for yourself? I mean, maybe do the weekly design challenge. Yeah, weekly design challenge is a good way. Rent and then turn it into the render weekly. Mm -hmm. I don't think that actually works. That's what they should do. They should team up and just. Well, they did. They did. They, 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 did, they, did, that did. they did a collab. They should do that every time. Every time. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't. I didn't know that Weekly Design Challenge was run by some eggs designers yeah. over in Norway. Yeah, we we talked about that. And then Render Weekly, completely unaffiliated, over there in Utah. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> the internet, the World Wide Web. Uh, hey, feel free to ask us some questions. We're here to give answers to questions. A hundred percent, Tim. I'm working on the Patreon, man. Shoot me a few bucks, and you can get it. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I don't know, Nick. People people are uh, people are hating on those coffee tampers. I, I think I should, uh... Should, I back, should back off. I didn't see the it's, final it's just design a, yet. It's just a flame war. I didn't see the... It's not a final design. It's just a concept. The pulling. Do you guys have any tips for ID students... And for mastering Whoa. portfolio, this yeah, crazy. I should <laughs> I should have looked at this before. It's yeah, it's. Uh, We're looking at James's um, latest concept here. Yeah. It's uh, 
It is what somebody who is uninformed in the tamping <laughs> world would come up with. What is, what's the question? Uh, do you guys have any tips for ID students and for mastering the portfolio? You never master a portfolio. The thing with portfolios is you just do them and then you redo them mm -hmm. and then you redo them yep. and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the cycle of life. <laughs> You never finish it, you just die. Oh, isn't that, isn't that true? Random question, do you know who be, who's behind the blue foam dust Insta? Nope. I have no idea, I have no clue. Do you? Rumors that is Hector. Do you think Hector's funny enough? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nick. <laughs> Sorry, Hector. Um, I don't know Hector well enough. Don't mess with those coffee tweakers. Yeah, don't mess with them. They'll, they'll freak out. Uh, you know, the, the problem with this wall is how, how things blend in. Or is that my shirt? Oh, you, I think that's my shirt. In? Are you blending in? in? In order to read the questions. Oh. Well, I think <laughs> that, that question is directed at you, Nick. Nick, for LNN, it appears that you sketch with just a blank piece of paper in front of you. No inspiration photos or anything. Uh, what part do mood boards and inspiration photos play in your work? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I mean, in general. Yeah. Um, I mean, for L and N, yeah, it's just freeform. It's just all in my mind. But for for a, a full on client project or something, I think there is a level of inspiration that I take. I think, especially if I get into the details of a project, then I'll check out Pinterest and you know other inspire like when mm -hmm. for those for the inspiration for the details mm. i never like looking at in Le Manouche for the actual concept right i'm always looking i feel like my concepts come from day-to-day -day life like the mundane mm. just the unique things that we run into every day yeah whether it be fat straps <laughs> or whatever i don't know i mean i think that I think that using Pinterest or Lemonouche and like using things from different industries to inspire forms or or concepts can be interesting. You know, it's like uh, using a shoe to inspire a phone. Yeah, that's, that's true. You can do some lateral kind of inspiration, design inspiration there. Yeah. Let's see. When talking to manufacturers, what is the hardest thing to get across? Uh, I would say construction, in my experience. That's a, interest, that's a very specific question. Because a lot of times manufacturers... Uh, not, this will, is not a major detail, this is a minor detail. No. Uh, a lot of times um, manufacturers will... Uh, just do what they know rather than try something new. Yeah. Um, which kind of makes sense. You know, they do what they're comfortable with and what they know that they're capable of doing. But if it's not what you specified, then it's just like this endless back and forth of like, no, this is actually what we want done. Um, and sometimes you find out that they're not even capable of doing it. Yeah, I would agree with that. That is a good question. Yeah. Um, let's see. What's up, Dave? Dave Joseph. Uh, any other questions? Um, yeah, who is Blue Foam Dust? I don't think it's Hector. Who do you think it is? Who is that? I think it might be Dom. Oh, Umber? Dumb. Yeah. He, uh... Or maybe it's one of the creative session guys. I don't I don't think it is, though. What if it's, uh, on? Ah, oh, could be. Because he's so quiet. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think it's anybody that we're thinking of. I think it's Chris Ferentz. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours do you spend sketching on an average day? Uh, I think it depends. Sometimes I don't sketch at all. Yeah. 
yeah, I don't know if I should be sketching more, but sometimes it depends on what kind of work you're, you're doing at the time. Uh, obviously, you sketch for at least an hour a week on oh, Late Night sure. Nick. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, how many hours a week do you sketch, I think is a better question. Mm-hmm. I think, um, I don't know. I would say eight hours. That's how much I would. Like, it's probably like an hour or two on on one day and then maybe three yeah. hours on another day. I don't know. I need, I, I feel like I need to do a bit more sketching. I've been, how I've many been hours, falling off the bandwagon a how little many, bit. How many hours a year do you sketch? <laughs> oh my God. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Three months. What's the topic for questions? Anything. Anything. Yeah. Don. No, Dom. <laughs> Don. Do you prefer yellow or blue foam dust? I prefer yellow. You had yellow? Yeah, we had yellow. We had blue. Yellow is the jam. I never heard of yellow. Because yellow, like... Ooh, oh, no, yellow like is a in... dense, dense foam. Okay, I had that. I was, I was thinking you guys had yellow insulation foam. No. Oh, yeah. Yellow, obviously, that's that's the prime stuff. Yeah. Ooh. Like, like, yeah. I mean, it's lining... That's what you should use. It's lining my lungs for the rest of eternity, but... But the thing is, is when you want that... If you aren't... If you don't got that cash... I know James has that just, like, stacks. You know, he can buy all the yellow foam he wants. But when you're cheap, you gotta buy the blue stuff. And when you're really cheap, you gotta buy the pink, pink. stuff. Pink! Oh, pink. So good. Uh... Form thinks it's Johnny Ives is blue foam dust. I don't think he's that funny. Unless it's like that, that I, hidden aspect of wouldn't himself. That, wouldn't that be a groundbreaking event? Yeah. Chris Ferentz. There he is. Blue foam dust. Is there a point at which you didn't want to design something? And how do you force yourself self to continue with the project? That's a good question. Um, because otherwise you'll get fired. <laughs> and, it's a good answer. Uh, I mean, I would never necessarily give myself a project that I wouldn't want to finish. Uh, you know, hopefully with your own projects, you would uh, want to finish them. I think, I, I think there is, obviously, like, I've designed litter boxes. Obviously, litter boxes are not a hot subject to design. Um, but I think what you have to do is pick out the fact that there's still something that you can be passionate about on, mm -hmm. on whatever it is, whatever you're designing, there is some minute detail or whatever to be passionate about. Right. Just really strive to make it better. Like my thing was like, it's actually kind of cool to design a litter box because no one's ever really designed a litter box. There's only right. one company that does it. It's called Mod Cat and their litter boxes are a hundred bucks, but no one designs a good cheap litter box. So I was like, this is my role. Yeah. This is my calling. I'm yeah. gonna do it. And I did it. You wanna see it? I'm just kidding. We Go already, get it. We've seen it. Go we've get it. We've seen it multiple times. So yeah. We don't see it anymore. Uh, I'm visiting NY in two weeks. Any suggestions what I should do? What do, what, do people, what do you say when people give you that comment? Because every time someone says that to me, I'm like, I, I, just, I just eat food and hang out with friends. Like, that's well, all I do. If you have never visited New York before, then you kind of have to go to Times Square, but if you have, then don't go to Times Square. Um, you know, and uh, yeah. I Statue mean, of Liberty, maybe? I haven't been to the Statue of Liberty since I've moved here. I, w I, did, I went when I was 10. Yeah, I probably <laughs> went sometime during my childhood, but haven't, haven't gone since. Um, but I think that, uh, I think, like, the High Line is great. That's good. It's a great place to go. I think, you know, you can't go wrong with something like Central Park. Um, but, uh, like, food-wise, are there any New York staples? Pizza, obviously. Shake Shack. No. Shake if you don't have a Shake Shack, you need to go to Shake Shack. Is that a New York thing? Yeah, yeah. it's New York-based. I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure. I say pizza. There's plenty of amazing pizza. Places. There's yeah, 
there's tons of pizza places around dollar slices. I might get a pizza right now. Yeah, do it. I also like this uh, form said, he, get, he sketches two hours a year. <laughs> <laughs> How far do you go from design to engineering in a freelance project? I don't do any engineering. Nope, none of it. None. I think you might be able to make better products if you like had your hand in the engineering, but I ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, I, I I'm just kidding. Mostly, my experience is going into offices and working with a design team, and then with engineers within that design team. So yeah. I, I think the the way that James has done it, where you actually are working within the company, is a lot better. Yeah. Uh, to to be able to influence the engineer team. Whereas when I do some projects, it's kind of like, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> um, best that's British design school. RCA. Yeah, that's the only one I've really heard of, though. Yellow rules, oh, I think we're bad back. I mean, I think we're far back here. Look, but damn, those fumes will kill you. <laughs> it's true. All them sketches. Can we? See the newest version of sketchbook, of the sketchbook iPhone now. It is printing currently. See it soon. Yeah. Visit Bushwick. Bushwick's cool. Yeah. You guys hammered? Uh, we're we're uh, loose. <laughs> <laughs> it's loose the incorrect term. Yeah. Chelsea Market. That's a good place. I like how everybody's giving suggestions. There we go. And see? all of them, none of them live in New York. <laughs> Archie's Pizza. Yeah. As for. Go ahead. As a freelancer, how often do you guys take an uninspiring gig just to pay the bills? Mm, zero? Ooh, that's a good... Uh, I haven't had to do that yet, but knock on wood. I think there's a difference between your freelancing that you do, James. There we go. I think there's a difference between what you do and what the general freelance... Right term means of like having clients that like you work with online and stuff yeah i've certainly done projects where it was just for money yeah um i think and this is i mean i'd say it every time but i think one day we really need to do a podcast that goes into depth on exactly how we freelance but i think um you really just have to be in the right position to be able to either for, for the ones that you don't want to do that you're not passionate about you need to charge a lot of money for right like you mm. need to charge like oh if they gave me this amount of money that'd be amazing yeah and and if they walk away then oh well i didn't want to do the project anyways that's how you need to frame it unfortunately not everyone can do that i would hope that you can work your way up there to be able to have that power but yeah that's a good point Oh, we skipped Max's, Max's question. Or maybe... Where? Max's question. Oh. Oh, we answered it. No, we answered it. I think you... I think when you come to New York, you should get an ear surgery, Max. <laughs> no, I... We answered that question. Maybe there's some technical difficulties or something. I don't know. Um, gotta get paid for the boring stuff. Yeah. I yeah, I think uh, I think that advice is right. I think like just if you don't have to take the gig and it seems boring, then you just go for the highest amount that could possibly make you interested in doing that job and and then see what they say. Um do you use any of the online platforms? for freelancing. I, for me, it's mostly been about connections with people. I've never put my stuff up anywhere for freelancing, but I have that's probably atypical. I No, well, I don't know. I've never, I, I agree, I've never gone out and like sought out a gig at all. Never tried to get a client, never like done anything. People have always come to me, um, or it's been through connections or whatever. Um, I think there's a lot of value in that. That means like you're doing good things. If you don't ever have to like go onto an online job board, mm -hmm. that means you're in the right place. Yeah. Um, 
I think Behance is a great platform to get your stuff out there. That's how I started getting my first freelance gigs. Mm. I don't there's I, I don't know of any that like you can like go online and search for a gig and like put your work towards I'm not sure about that, but I know that like putting your work out there, Behance is a great way to do it. Mm-hmm. I guess we didn't answer the right question. But Max, Max it must not come as Max Max He's about to he's about to mention it. Send resend your question. We missed it twice. Maybe there's some sort of um there might be a bug. A bug or a, a sensor. Are you putting a bad word in there, Max? Yeah. Max, no bad words. None of those bad yeah. words. Startup idea. All right, bet will. Let's hear it. Or or is he asking us for a startup idea? Oh, for freelance ID website. Oh. Uh. But let's but let's think of a startup idea, Nick. Um, drone racing. Drone racing? Yes. Like a drone racing track? Drone racing. Like block a, blockchain arena. Drone racing blockchain. Blockchain. Yeah. Just add blockchain to whatever word you want, and it's a startup. No. <laughs> We need a we need a real startup here, Max. We still haven't seen your idea. You must be cursing in it. You must be saying some bad bad stuff because Instagram's censoring it. Yeah. I, okay. I want to I want to think of a startup right now, Nick. Let's. let's... I'm actually dead serious about the drone racing thing. I think that's a very valid startup. I think drone racing will be the next sport. Drone racing is going to overtake NASCAR. Uh, this is a question for you, Nick. Did you think that your sketch slash walking setup may induce motion sickness? Someone mentioned that. Someone mentioned that to me. Whatever. Haters are going to throw up. <laughs> um, Max, just send us the question without all the lewd language. <laughs> then it'll come through. Designing obstacles for drone racing. Oh, that's cool. Like inflatables. I think they use inflatables for drone racing. Mm. But but Nick, I want yeah, I what's your want, startup, James? I want a startup. I I'm trying to think of one on the spot. I'm trying to think of one right now on the spot. I mean, I could I also think another startup could be like a VR restaurant. Think about it. VR headset, you're eating food, it's the whole experience. You're on top of a mountain in Malaysia. But there, is it? But is it just like? Is it just like a single booth? Like you get into a single booth and you put on a headset and you're across from somebody that you don't know, and they like they push your food through this little, little yes. like slot. Yes, it's very much there. like a, a booth. Mm -hmm. And uh, but like you're actually like surrounded by a bunch of people. And in, in virtual reality, I kind of imagine you being on some sort of like secluded island or something. Oh, interesting. And there's this uh, five-star chef that's like cooking. It's like a Benihana's almost. Yeah. You know? And he just gives you the food. But, yeah. But, you know, you're eating it in reality. It tastes amazing. But really, it's just like ramen noodles or whatever. Mm, interesting. Uh, Dave says VR shoes. Um, uh, that's interesting. What if like they had treadmills on the bottom so that you could walk and but the treadmills would go in reverse so you would stay in the same place. Mm. Interesting. Come on, James, what's your startup? Well, oh gosh, Nick, I'm trying to think of something. I feel like <laughs> Matt, Max is still trying to post this question. I don't know why he can't post it. He, <laughs> um, what's, uh, okay. So like, I'm thinking about something around food for some reason. Do a restaurant? I think um Drone is, delivery? is there is there some sort of startup where you have like you are connected to people who like to cook that can come and cook things at your house. Oh, like Airbnb but for cooks. Yeah. Mm. Because I don't like cooking and um like neither my wife or I seem there to really like cooking. Now we got it. Now and we got it. And I would love to just like, yeah, like I'll pay for all the ingredients. I'll pay for everything. Like just come over and cook it. I think that is a great startup. There's got to be one already like that, right? Maybe. Um, 
Honestly, though, creating VR experiences that are blended with tracked physical items. I like your hire a chef idea. That's good. Chef BNB. Max says that he'll send our question to the pod. I don't know why you can't push your question on Max. Maybe it's too long? Yeah, kind of. I think it's called Schmeal. I'll have to look into that because I need it. I just like, I hate ordering out all the time. Yeah. And because I feel like it's probably not that healthy. And I would love to just like have, you know, because essentially, okay, let, let, like, let's, let's get big picture here for a second. Essentially what the Industrial Revolution brought us, which were goods that were typically just like only available to people of the upper, upper classes, like goods and services. Like essentially a restaurant is like having servants. Like, you know, there, there are all these things that, that as we progress in terms of like, you know, our, our society, we essentially just have bits of what the aristocracy of England had at their disposal. So to have a cook on staff, you know, that's like essentially the closest that you can get to being like a rich made person. James's startup, startup is like taking bits and pieces of the monarchies and implementing it yes, into daily life. That's essentially what we've done. Like that's essentially what we've done, but at like mass scales in most cases. I mean, I'm on board. Everyone loves to be a king. You know, getting your shoe shined? Come on. <laughs> Or, uh, you know, there's... Uber, Uber for shoe shine, shoe shining, <laughs> Uber for shoe shine. Also, also just so you guys know to just make to all you have to do to come up with a startup idea is just implement some buzzwords and then just say Uber or Airbnb at the end. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's VR gaming for Uber or it's yeah. like, you know, you just like drones for Airbnb, you know, you just like, you just smash some words together. It's right. a, it's a startup. Right. Uh, Lucas is asking me how comfy are those shoes? Are you talking about the Adidas uh, boosts that I got? Because I haven't worn them since I got them. Why not? Because I don't want to scuff them up before going to Italy. <laughs> listen, I, listen, the Italians especially are like, like in terms of fashion, they're so critical and I don't want to give them any reason to be like, Oh, gosh, what an American coming here with scuffed up shoes. Do you see those uh, hype shoes that Seth got? Which ones? They look like they had scuffs on them. I'm not sure. They're like by Nigel Langley or something? Nigel Langley? You have to look it up. It looked like shoes. White basketball or like tan basketball shoes. But it looked like they had scuffs on them. Huh. On purpose. Hmm. Which is kind of funny. And yeah. Kind of well, it's kind of like distressed jeans and like ripped jeans. It's like, yeah. you know, I don't know. But um, I think we should wrap it up, Nick. All right. Uh, anyway, this has been Major Details After the Pod. Um, hey, if, uh, if you're not already, like and subscribe to uh, Minor Details on YouTube. Uh, also, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. Uh, but the YouTube, you get the full experience. You do. You get to see our faces, our profiles on the on the YouTube. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, and just always be looking out, be glued to your phone all the time, just in case major details after the pod is coming up. Oh, oh no! It's time. It's they're time. They're shutting the lights time. off on us. Oh god, <laughs> guys, we got to get out of here. They're on to us. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we will see you next week. Uh, yeah, I'm James Connors at I own Draw and Receipts. You know that. And that's uh, Nick P. Baker. Good night, everybody. Peace out. Peace.